Hey there, my friend, welcome. I'm Dr. Anthony Balduzzi, founder here at the Fit Father Project. In today's video, I wanna cover the best muscle building supplements, the ones that are actually research proven to work, um, as well as some of the you know, average and the worst ones that we recommend you avoid. Um, and this is not just our opinion, this is what the research shows. And the reason I think this video is so important is that the supplement industry is over a hundred billion dollar industry. There is so much money to be made in supplements and what that often means is there are so many BS claims, crap products and good hardworking people like us who want to take something that's going to help us reach our muscle building goals, you know, it can be really confusing to separate fact from fiction on what actually works. In this video, I want to help you do that um, with some of the research back supplements. We're going to cover these, we're going to do it quickly, um, and I'm going to give you some more links where you can deep dive into the research um, for yourself, but this is the overview of what actually works. I hope you're going to learn a ton. Get a pen and paper. We're going to talk about some finer points of each of these, um, and you're going to learn a ton, so let's dive on in, my friend. FitFatherProject.com. All right, so let's jump right into it. We're gonna start with the stuff that actually works. And the foundational number one, probably best research supplement of all time is creatine monohydrate. Um, and we're talking about monohydrate because there's a lot of different kinds of creatine. When I was growing up and I was very serious into bodybuilding, um, there was all these different kinds of, of creatine. There was, you know, uh, you know, effervescent creatine, creatine dimalate, creatine ester, this and that. Uh, you know, there's just so many different kinds. And creatine monohydrate, the good old basic creatine monohydrate, is what the research shows works best. And this is a supplement that we're often told, um, you know, helps our bodies produce more ATP because we use creatine in the creatine phosphate pathway, which is one of the main energy pathways that drives high intensity activities like weightlifting for short burst activity. So creatine does help give our bodies more energy in the form of ATP to lift more weights. But it's not just that. Creatine also helps volumize our cells. For people who respond well to creatine, um, it helps you know, basically increase um, intramuscular water retention, which has a volumizing effect, which makes you look bigger and heavier, which is nice. But what new research shows is that creatine directly affects the mechanisms that help us build muscle. Uh, creatine directly acts on mTOR, um, which is one of the downstream protein signaling pathways that helps our bodies build muscle. So this is something that, believe it or not, does not have to be cycled, even though we, set, we thought it used to be five grams of creatine monohydrate taken post-workout is the best thing we know right now in terms of just increasing muscle mass. Um, and once your body is saturated with creatine, you've been taking it consistently for five grams, there's not benefit on going over that amount. So five grams in a post-workout protein shake is good. And that brings us, um, you know, conveniently to number two is quality protein. A quality protein powder um, is essential, and most of us know that. Um, but there's a big difference between a non-quality protein and a quality protein. And when I'm talking about quality protein powder, what we need to evaluate when it comes to quality protein um, is the amino acid profile of the protein. Um, in particular, there's one amino acid, leucine, which is a part of the branch chain amino acids. We're gonna get to these down here in just a second. Um, but leucine is one of the main amino acids that signals our bodies um, to repair and initiate protein synthesis, which is really muscle building. So we need a protein powder that has enough leucine. Um, but we also want to look at uh, the digestion speed of the protein. And there's a big difference between a quicker digesting whey protein and a slower digesting casein protein. Now both of these have benefits and it seems like for muscle building uh, that a mix of a whey and casein blend is best. And now I'm not gonna open up the can of worms on casein because there is some research uh, that shows that casein may have some you know, health detriments to it and that high casein diets are linked to certain kinds of cancers and there's lots of research on that. We're not gonna get down the rabbit hole on that. For the purposes of muscle building, a mix of whey and casein seems to be best if your goal is straight up to maximize muscle building protein synthesis. Casein is a great protein powder um, to take at night. You know, it does help increase that muscle protein synthesis. I'll link some research that shows that athletes that take casein at night build more muscle than those who do not. That's interesting, and casein is found in dairy. Um, you know, most of dairy, if we took milk, which has that milk protein isolate, it's 80% casein, 20% whey. So it's a mostly slow digesting protein. And that's a reason why a lot of these old school muscle building programs um, that have the gallon of milk a day with the, you know, high rep, heavy squats work so well for muscle building, it's like, man, you're getting all of the fats and uh, the proteins, those slow digesting proteins and all those quality calories, plus you're lifting heavy weights and doing squats, you know, it's a recipe for muscle building. 
Not saying that's what you should do. Um, I personally did that. I had great results growing up when I was in high school. Um, but just know the quality protein powder is huge and recommend that you do it post-workout. Now you do not need to do like 100 grams of post-workout protein. Um, something as simple as around 40 grams, which is mostly like a scoop and a half, just two scoops of most protein powders. I would personally do a mix of whey or casein if my goal were to maximize muscle building with five grams of creatine in a post-workout shake, that will get you started. Um, and also a, we can take a quick detour in terms of setting um, protein targets. A real simple way to start thinking about this is I like to err on the side of doing uh, more protein than the bare minimum because certain people respond better to higher protein diets than others. I like to set it to a gram of protein per pound of lean body weight. So to make it really easy, if you are um, a 175 pound guy um, that wants to, you know, let's say get up to maybe 200 pounds of body weight over time, um, then we'll take your lean body weight, let's just say it's somewhere around 150 grams. I would have 150 grams of quality protein, maybe even up to 175 grams spread throughout the day, but make sure you're getting around 40 of that in your post-workout shake with a blend of, you know, the whey and casein. Um, and I don't wanna, you know, maybe some people here will be looking, oh, bro science, all that stuff. You do not have to have protein every two hours. I'm not making those claims. You know, you can intermittent fast. You could have all your protein in one big meal. Um, it just comes down to your preference of getting these calories in I um, mean, getting the quality protein in. The macronutrients, the amount of protein you get is important and a quality protein powder post-workout is a good way to do that. Now, next supplement is vitamin D3 which is, believe it or not, a supplement that a lot of guys who want to build muscle are not taking. Uh, vitamin D3 is so amazing. We're getting lots of new research um, about vitamin D3 on all its health benefits. It actually helps increase testosterone levels. We're gonna talk about some crappy testosterone boosters down here. Vitamin D3 actually helps do that, aids in muscle recovery, keeps your bones strong, keeps your immune system strong. We're learning so much about vitamin D3, it actually acts more like a hormone than a standard vitamin, which is really cool. Um, and so a lot of guys can benefit who are doing hard training from taking vitamin D3 because stress depletes vitamin D3. Working a damn desk job where you're not getting any sun depletes your vitamin D3. Um, and so a lot of people are vitamin D3 deficient, especially if you live above, I think, the 37 degree latitude. We can put up a little graphic of this right now um, where your skin, it's at such an area of, of, of the globe where your skin cannot synthesize vitamin D3 from the sun, so a lot of us can benefit from taking some D3. It'll help our recovery. Um, another thing is that's really overlooked is digestion when it comes to building muscle. Um, and that's why we're gonna talk about probiotics in just a second because muscle building, you know, there are, it's, it's tough to do consistently, but the real tenets of it are not that complicated, right? We're gonna do some kind of quality training, lifting progressively heavier weights, so we're damaging the muscles, then we're sleeping and eating to recover. Um, and really, knowing that muscles grow outside the gym, we need to train well, and then sleep and eat to recover and build the muscle, um, we need to really focus on not just getting the right foods in our mouth, but how well are those foods being digested and assimilated. And we were learning so much more about the importance of probiotics, the good gut bacteria, that line our entire digestive tract and how these guys, we have a symbiotic relationship with our gut bacteria and they actually help us digest the food. The food they eat, we break it down. They break down that fiber, they turn it into short chain fatty acids, we use that for energy, helps our digestion, and we're now even seeing that the, the probiotics, the good gut bacteria, um, there are different kinds of gut flora that help people stay lean, and certain kinds of gut flora, and what we'll call dysbiosis, when the gut flora gets messed up, that can actually lead to weight gain. And they're showing now, you can do fecal transplants, where you transplant healthy gut flora from people into overweight people, and they can lose weight. So it has a real effect. I mean, this is real stuff. It might sound crazy, but yeah, they actually do take poop from lean people with good gut bacteria, put it into obese people, and they start to lose weight. So it's the real deal, and we need to maximize our gut flora for the digestion to make sure that the nutrients we are eating are being properly used. Next, fish oil. Why I consider this one of the best muscle building supplements is even though it does not directly build muscle, um, it helps us recover, it helps burn fat, it decreases inflammation, helps improve energy levels, keeps our brains healthy. And so a big thing is we talked about the recipe for muscle building, good training, good nutrition, and recovery with the sleep and the eating. Um, 
anti, good natural anti-inflammatories like fish oil are just so helpful um, for actually just improving our ability to recover from exercise. And so fish oil is not an essential supplement because if you are eating cold water fatty fish like salmon or sardines a couple times per week, you're getting enough omega-3s. But if not, it's a good idea to supplement. It can help, uh, you know, help improve your recovery and just generally keeps you healthy because slamming the weights really hard all the time, you know, eating tons of calories is not the easiest thing on your body. So things that we can do to kind of just make this whole process healthier, like the fish oil, really, really good idea. Um, and also a lot of people don't realize that um, all your cells in your body are surrounded by these phospholipid layers. Um, it's you know a bunch of fats that line the outside of these cells. Um, and this process of building new proteins and building new muscle um, requires certain hormones like testosterone to enter that fatty layer of the cell, go to the nucleus, and start to trigger um, the whole process for building new proteins. Um, that's gonna lead to the muscle building. And those omega-3s that we eat actually help improve the fluidity of the membrane of all our cells. And so when our cells are more fluid and have a healthier membrane, you know, it, it lends itself to saying, hey, you know, the cell is healthier, it's gonna be easier for that cell to carry out you know, the proper functions of building the proteins that we need with the muscle building goals. So something to think about with the fish oil. Let's talk about the average supplements. Average does not mean that they do not work. In fact, it means that they do work um, to, in certain contexts, in certain respects. Um, the first one I wanna talk about is beta alanine, uh, which is a really interesting supplement. Beta alanine, uh, combines in your body with an amino acid histidine um, and it forms something called carnosine. It's a lot of rhyming words. Basically what beta alanine does is help buffer your muscles against lactic acid in a buildup in pH. We all know it, any of us guys that lift, as you lift more, you get that burn in your muscle. What's happening is you're creating an oxygen um, deficient environment. It's anaerobic exercise. Uh, this, these lactate and these metabolic byproducts of that anaerobic metabolism build up, the pH of the muscle increases, um, I'm sorry, I should say decreases, it gets more acidic, the pH gets more acidic, um, we feel that burn and the muscle reaches failure. What we found is that we can buffer the pH, give our bodies things to help uh, buffer that pH so we don't get so uh, acidic as we're lifting, that can help with the gains. So beta alanine is something that does that. It helps raise carnosine levels in the muscle, which is one of those buffers to the, um, to the acidity of the muscle when you're training. So it can be effective. It needs to be taken long term. It does give you those beta alanine tingles. If you've taken it, you know. If you've ever taken a pre-workout and you feel like your forehead's tingling, it's typically due to the beta alanine. Um, it's a safe supplement. It can be effective, but do not expect like Hulk level results from taking beta alanine. It's something that can help you perform better in the gym. But do you know what no one talks about that's actually better than beta alanine is baking soda. I didn't actually write this on the list, but uh, baking soda is perhaps the number one not talked about uh, supplement for performance that actually is a way better acid buffer than beta alanine. Um, and there's ways, and I'll link some research below this video um, on ways you can take you know, baking soda, but it actually dramatically works for improving your performance in the squat, the deadlift, sprints, it's amazing. Um, it's like a beefed up version of beta alanine, um, but no one really sells it. So at, like you can buy it in a grocery store, but it's not really marketed as a sports supplement, even though it's incredibly effective. Uh, next one is nitrate. I mean, nitrate, I'm referring to uh, naturally occurring nitrates that happen that are in some kind of plants like beets. And what nitrates do is they're vasodilators. You've probably seen some of these nitric oxide supplements that claim to make you super veiny and vascular, increase your blood flow, which we know is good for muscle building, give you better pumps in the gym, which is an awesome feeling. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is that most nitric oxide boosters are total crap. A lot of these ones with high dose arginine, or they have ornithine or citrulline, some of these other compounds, they just really don't work that well. They didn't pan out. There were good ideas and concept. I remember uh, when I was in high school and I really got serious about lifting weights, um, I read this little pamphlet on nitric oxide boosters and I thought it was the greatest thing ever. And I think I begged my mom to buy me some $80 nitric oxide supplement that did absolutely nothing. Uh, but the point being is it's, it's an attractive proposition, but the nitrates actually do work. The nitrates found in beets do actually help with this vasodilation and new good pre-workout supplements on the market are starting to include these because they work. But you can also eat foods that are high in nitrates. Um, we'll include a foods list in here and you can also Google this stuff. Foods high in nitrates, natural nitrates from plant-based foods do help with the vasodilation and good pre-workouts are including these now. BCAAs, um, I included this in the average section because 
a lot of people think BCAAs are this miracle supplement. What BCAAs are is a specific subset or family of amino acids, uh, leucine, isoleucine, valine, um, that leucine in particular is the main BCA that helps our bodies build muscle. It's a trigger for protein synthesis. But what it turns out is that a quality whey protein powder has all the BCAAs you need. You know, eating a protein rich diet gives you all the BCAAs you need for building muscle. And what the research shows is that actually including more BCAAs, if your goal is muscle building, will not improve your gains. It might taste good and you get to carry around some water jug with some uh, Kool-Aid looking liquid and you might enjoy that and that might make you feel awesome in the gym, but it will not really help your gains. Where BCAAs can be effective is they're anti-catabolic. They help prevent muscle breakdown while you're dieting. And that is a scenario where BCAAs can be effective or if you train fasted um, in the morning and you have not had any food in you, BCAAs can be a good buffer to help prevent muscle loss. BCAAs can actually spike your insulin um, enough to help you know, prevent some of the catabolism that happens when you train. So fasted morning applications of BCAAs, good. Dieting with BCAAs, good. Thinking that adding BCAAs into your regimen, if you're eating enough calories, you're in a calorie surplus, you're lifting heavy and thinking it's gonna improve your gains, not good, sorry, it won't. Didn't quite pan out. Now to the worst supplements here, the <clears throat> first one I'm gonna say is glutamine. <clears throat> and I wanna say here, the reason I put glutamine in the worst, it's not that it's harmful for your body. Glutamine is just one of those supplements that just didn't pan out and has been touted for so long as an essential post-workout recovery supplement, but it just really doesn't work. Um, the thought behind it is that our muscles have so much naturally occurring glutamine. It's an, most, I think the most abundant amino acid in our muscle tissue. Um, and it does help in a Petri dish when you add glutamine, it does help with muscle repair. But the problem is that glutamine, when we take it orally, doesn't actually reach our muscle tissues. Um, our entire digestive tract loves glutamine. It soaks up glutamine um, and it can help actually decrease inflammation in your digestive tract, um, and, but it's kind of sequestered in there. It doesn't actually get into the muscles, doesn't really help with recovery. It is really good in medical conditions for people with inflammatory bowel syndrome, inflammatory bowel disease, whether it's a Crohn's or a colitis. There are some good applications of high dose glutamine, really decreasing inflammation throughout the GI tract, but it won't help your gains. So so sorry, and do know this, that a diet rich in a quality protein powder gives you glutamine anyways. Uh, glutamine is very high in, in milk and dairy products, high in quality protein powders, but I would not supplement, it's not necessary. Next thing is testosterone boosters. Typically these um, include uh, probably some zinc and some magnesium, plus a, different, a whole series of different kinds of herbs, whether it's tribulus or long jack or tomcat ali. Um, there's so many different kinds of herbs um, and they just didn't really pan out in the research. Testosterone boosters reliably, um, these herbs in particular don't really boost testosterone. Um, and if they do, it's with people who have testosterone deficiency who are typically older. Uh, there may be some applications there, um, but for most people, they do not work. They can actually increase your libido and your sperm quality. If that's something you're interested in, then hey, go for it. It could be good, but do not take a testosterone booster, a natural testosterone booster, thinking it's gonna really raise your testosterone levels. It just doesn't work like that, sadly, guys. And most of these supplements are like $50 a bottle. I mean, for $50 a bottle, you can pretty much get quality of all of these as a full stack. A lot of these are thankfully very affordable. Avoid testosterone boosters. Um, and in this category, I'm talking about these herbal testosterone boosters. There are other things like pro-hormones, pro-steroids, and then full-blown testosterone and steroids that are in a totally different category than this conversation. We're talking about supplements not drugs. This is another category of drugs and a lot of those can be effective and can also be incredibly dangerous as well. Um, but point being, testosterone boosters, no go, not gonna be effective for your muscle gains. And I also wanted to add mass gainers in there um, because mass gainers, typically um, are just a bunch of just low quality um, carbohydrates, like some dextrose with some low quality like crap protein um, and some really unhealthy vegetable oils. They're just like, hey, let's just throw a shit ton of calories, a thousand calories a scoop. And we know that calories are important for muscle building, but most mass gainers will really just make you fat. You know, get most of your calories from good high quality foods. If you need a mass gainer and you need to like, you're busy, you're on the go, you know you're not eating enough, then make your own. Take some oatmeal, take some coconut oil, throw in some quality protein powder, make your own whole foods based mass gainer, throw some you know, coconut oil, MCT oil, whatever, throw some milk in there if, if you're good with dairy. Um, that's a better option than doing one of these low quality, um, expensive, crappy calorie sources. 
So I hope this helped. This was a hell of a rant. Um, this is really some of the best research that we know right now on stuff that actually works. And look, it's not sexy. We, I wish that testosterone boosters worked. I wish that BCAs turned you into Ronnie Coleman overnight. It just does not work like that. So we gotta stick to the fundamentals. Um, and remember too, that supplements are supplemental. You know, you need to have a good training program in place. You need to have a good diet plan in place or none of this stuff is really going to give you the gains that you want. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. We have some other great videos around the channel related directly to muscle building. Like uh, we have a good popular video right now called, called how long does it take to build muscle where we cover some of the principles of what you can expect with muscle building as well as the proper, you know, calories and some ideas on, on actually implementing a muscle building routine. And of course we have our five best muscle builders free video um, and this particularly geared for guys who are over 35 who feel like their their joints aren't the same as they used to be and we show you the five best muscle building exercises and how to modify them to be safe on your knees shoulders low back um, and even if you're a young buck watching this and you'd like to check that out it's a good idea to start doing these exercises safer so you don't injure yourself and, and you set yourself up for the long-term success because getting injured is one of the worst things so that five best free muscle builders video um, is linked below it's here as well definitely check that out because I know you're interested in this topic. That would be a good way for you and I to deep dive, to go even deeper and help you get some good gains. I hope you found this valuable. If you like this, give us a thumbs up. Comment below. If we miss something and there is research, hey, you know, we make mistakes. So let us know in the comments below. Feel free to comment with some other things. If you found something shocking, also comment below. Let us know. Um, I want to have an open discussion here about what actually works and keep it research-based um, on, on really what's effective right now. So I'd love to hear from you. And uh, if you appreciate this too, let us know. We put a lot of time and effort into publishing good videos here on our FitFowler Project channel. And we appreciate your time and you actually checking out this video. So hit thumbs up if you like this. Subscribe if you'd like more content on this on muscle building, fat loss, you know, nutrition, motivation, everything you need to know to stay strong and healthy for your family, we are the Fit Father Project. This is what we do, my friend. Thanks for stopping by. Subscribe and I'll see you in our other videos and I'll see you around our channel and check out those free resources. I'll talk to you soon, my friend.